Dallas. Welcome back to the Gruesome Garage. It's an exciting day today. We have finally got this piece of shit trailer done. I couldn't be any happier, and let me tell you, big old Jeff here is pretty stoked. I want to show you guys something real fast, and then we'll get to the main event. So, before I was talking in the other videos about figuring out how to put the fenders on so we can take them off pretty easily, and we figured, I, it seems like we figured out a pretty decent way. So, let me show you guys. As I showed before, my father made these pieces of wood. So, we went, ran carriage bolts through those, and we have nylon lock nuts for three of the tabs, and they come off super easy so we can pop the fenders off. Now the quick catch is, there's we wanted lights on the fenders. So we decided that the easiest way to do this is, if you look down here, I don't know if you can see, guys, but I made, I put a plug right on the fenders so we can pop the plug off the wiring, and we can take the fenders off, and we can put our Jeeps, whatever the hell we want, Unimogs, what, uh, Five and a half tons, deuce and a half, whatever we need to, we'll throw it right on here, no problems. Now, guys, let me tell you, I am so happy about this because we are finally done and we can move on to something fun. My truck. I scheduled it for the dyno coming up and it's time to prep and get ready. So check it out, boys. So guys, we got the truck back here and we're ready to do the dyno prep. We're gonna start by doing the U-bolt straps because a few weeks ago, I decided to absolutely destroy my drive shaft U-bolts. The straps decided to blow out on the highway. I guess maybe it was the lack of Loctite or I let my girlfriend drive it a little and it, she doesn't know how to use a clutch, but it dropped on me. Luckily, I stopped in time before it completely spit out of the yoke, or else we would have had a big mess on my hands. My drive shaft is still good. I temporarily put a couple of bolts in from the hardware store, but I wanted to get the real deal. So, of course, we went to Yukon, got the right stuff, and let's do it. Guys, we got it all taken out, and now you can see what happened. Two of these bolts started loosening up, and the other side, thankfully, didn't loosen up too, so that held. But on the highway, I just started getting a wicked vibration. I pulled over, and just in time, I, I, I went to move it a little. I thought it was my clutch, you know? I, I have a dual mass clutch in here, and I really shouldn't, and I thought my clutch let loose, so I went underneath, and... I didn't see anything at first, you know, no guts coming out of the front of the trans. I didn't think anything. So I pulled up a little with it and that's when the drive shaft just completely spit out. And I was like, thankfully it only happened. When I was going, you know, one, two miles an hour on the side of the road and not 70 on the highway. So that's all good. Come check it out. As you can see, looks a little better now. Looks like it's done right. It doesn't have a hardware store bolt in it. And this big old monster drive shaft's ready to be fully torqued. As I got my brother changing the pressure switch on my air horn setup, we're gonna change the moil oil on this thing. It's only been 1,000, 1,100 miles since I changed the oil last month. <laughs> since you know, it's a new engine. I just want to, I first changed it after a hundred. Now I'm changing after a thousand and I'm probably just going to let this ride out to the, you know, three to 5,000 range that a regular IDI has. But come on guys, you know what we got only the best, you know, what happens to the rest. It goes in the garbage. I really wanted a motorcraft filter, but Wix is just as good. I usually put a motorcraft on. But convenience is convenience, and I want to get this done. Well, guys, maybe some of you don't know this. Maybe some of you do. But if you're an IDI guy and you look at this filter, you are going to notice that it is too big. That's because it's not from an IDI. This is very common change. It is a 
OBS Power Stroke, probably in other Power Strokes too, but I know it works for the OBS Power Stroke oil filter. It holds twice as much as an IDI oil filter, and apparently the filtration is much better. So if you guys are curious, there's the part number. It's a lot, also it's a lot more readily available at the auto parts store. A lot of the times it's it was hard for me to find the correct oil filter and also them they're like $10, $15 at the auto parts store where the IDI filters were like $15, $20. So there's your little IDI hack for the day. Another stupid thing that I always do is if possible, a lot of these stupid new Jap cars and imports like to put the oil filter sideways or the other way, or other way like completely upside down. So you can't really fill the oil filter, but especially with these old trucks that, you know, that you just sunk a lot of money into, you really don't want to run the thing dry for a little bit. So I always pre-fill the oil filter, especially when it holds a whopping two quarts. Like I said before, the stock IDI holds one quart of oil. This holds two quarts. So she's a real full sender, boys and girls. Well, guys, filter's in. Oil's been moiled. And I think we're ready to go on the dyno. I am very excited. I don't think she's going to make extreme amounts of power because, you know, it's an IDI. But hopefully she makes more than stock. It, of course, feels like three times as more stock, so we'll see. I'm really excited, and you guys should be too. Tune in next time, and you'll see this thing make some power.